Welcome everyone to today's video. This is our dual core Apple G5 PowerPC workstation. Actually the final PowerPC 64-bit workstation Apple produced. Top of the line, the only machine faster was a dual socket, two times two cores, using exactly the CPUs for a total of quad cores. I intentionally did not got the quad core version of this. Not only was it more forbiddable expensive, it also came with liquid cooling and at that time I was rather suspicious of liquid cooling and I did not want it to have coolant leaks and logic board damage and such due to leaking coolant. So this is why I went the safe road for the only dual core half as powerful version of this, obviously for our PowerPC 64 development with T2 Linux at that time. Case-wise it is this huge aluminum tower, as heavy or maybe even slightly more heavy than the Octane front-loading DVD writer thing, power button, headphone jack, USB and firewire. On the back we got the huge exhaust fans, PCIe slots and 2 times Ethernet, firewire 800, firewire 400, optical SPDIF in and out, another speaker line out and microphone in as well as three USB 2 ports. The machine apparently was deemed so power hungry that it's not using a regular cold plug that 99% of all the other computers use. This is using this server grade higher amp plug thing. This is the area for the antenna that my machine does not have. And I also got the entry level NVIDIA card 6600 LE I think. And later I upgraded this. I got the last GeForce that fits in here some 9000 something or so, because back in the day the Novo 2D open source X driver was barely running with 2D acceleration in 2005, maybe a nearly unisolated frame buffer. And I did not want it to overspend on graphics that I was sure will not be able to use for a long time. And that is how it was for many years. I had barely working 2D graphics on there. Only later years the Novo driver got actually 3D acceleration working on these machines, I think. And then I upgraded from eBay to a 9600 something, however this card was so loud I think it was still missing or is still missing fan control also on open source Linux Xorg drivers. Anyway I don't reuse it so I then also got an additional 6600 without LE that is if I recall correctly twice as fast as the LE version in there. So let's take a quick look inside. It has a nice unlatch mechanism here that you also can lock with a Kensington lock. And then this aluminium side plate goes off like this and they even printed instructions how to remove the plastic cover and the fan to install memory modules. It is by the way printed upside down so if you flip it around like this it's readable. If you turn it around like this it's upside down. And this is the fine G5 assembly. As you can see some plastic cover. I have not really an idea why they did this. Apparently to optimize airflow just a little bit over the graphic card I guess. And also you could probably run the machine like this if you wanted to showcase it. Actually I've seen it in Apple stores back in the day being run with this cover open. And apparently it also has a sensor here. Here is some aluminum foil or so. I think the fans go to higher speed if this is removed for longer than 30 seconds or so. I will not disassemble the whole machine today. Maybe we can do this for another day. Because I'm always a little bit careful not to ruin these machines as getting spare parts can be expensive and such. Especially as this model is quite unscratched and quite good condition I would say. For some funny reason they have here a nice G5 logo on there. This fan can be removed just like this with pin header connectors here. And my machine has the issue for a long time, already since the second year or so of ownership in 2007, that this fan sometimes go to full speed. First of all, that the logic board has some defect, but just pulling it out and plugging it in again fixes this issue at least for a month or two. So maybe the contacts are corroded or something like that. Memory slots here, I think by default it came with not as much memory was it printed here. If this print is correct, I ordered it with the base level of 512 megabyte of memory or something, little as this. This is of course crazy 
little and only later when I saved more money again I upgraded the memory to some maybe in the meantime I got some 9 or so gigabyte in there so original 512 plus another gigabyte and 8 gigabyte or something like that I actually wonder if I could upgrade the CPU to the 2.5 gigahertz version that would actually be interesting to try out I already once tried to order the CPU on eBay but they didn't deliver it in retrospect I think it was anyway the non-dual core version of earlier models anyway you need to be really careful when trying to order replacement CPUs for this and obviously the listings are often not that accurate and obviously they were not meant to be user swapped the slightly upgraded Nvidia card in there as I said original was the LE version this one is twice as fast and still without fan in contrast to the more performant GeForce I have in the shelves that was too loud in later Intel Mac Pros they changed this hard drive base these are relatively simple here it's a locking thing and then it just pulls out like this often a little bit difficult to get out there and this slots in just with screws in later Mac Pros they have here real aluminium hard drive base to really slot in there and the Mac Pros also have a free slot for a second optical drive for some reason that probably next to nobody ever used in retrospect I only regret not getting the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module they are also not so easy to get aftermarket otherwise I am quite happy with Ethernet obviously here in the office don't really need wireless for that I think in the meantime everything works in Linux except the optical input that has not a driver written there is even open source code of macOS for this optical in but someone still needs to write the driver for this if they wanted to use it I think everything else works and usually even 3D acceleration if there is not a new regression as you have seen in my huge benchmark compilation the other months the machine in retrospect was not that fast however that is what you get for buying things without proper benchmark of course Windows and Mac was not as comparable with Linux it's easier to benchmark but nonetheless a nice machine for 64 and 32 bit power PC development and now we switch it on and try to install the latest T2 build from last night to get all the various architectures tested What many people don't know, to eject the CD-ROM in earlier Macs, as the CD-ROM doesn't have eject button, it was usually pressing the mouse button, maybe even the E key on the keyboard. Let's see which works here. Maybe you already press the Alt Option key for the boot chooser. Otherwise I think you can boot to CD-ROM by pressing C. But I usually use the boot chooser as a universal means to access this. Okay, so the CD-ROM ejected the CD, so the mouse button worked on this machine. I already burned this rewritable CD-ROM yesterday. I'm not sure if this will work. Maybe this will have some error during the installation because it did not verify. Apparently they do not write reliable anymore after a decade or two. Let's see if it finds it automatically. Probably you need to press the rescan button here. On newer Intel Macs you do not need to press the rescan button and this boot chooser obviously looks slightly nicer. The device scan always hangs quite a bit. I think mostly looking for FireWire devices. <laughs> 